Hey ladies and gents, welcome to a Tactical Masterclass in eFootball 2023. It's so important to analyse your play and that's what episode 1 is going to be all about. It's identifying a mistake or problem you're facing, correcting it and then coming out on top. Normally I play a 4-2-3-1 possession based style and try to play a good game of football whether it's using basic or full manual controls if you've been watching my streams but I come up against a typical meta 4-2-4 formation so I had to find a way to try and counter it so I decided to opt for a very narrow 442 as you're seeing here. I set both of my fullbacks to defensive, very important because with a 424, what they're looking to try to do is get the ball wide to one of their wide players, then pass across those four players, and usually one fullback will tuck in and be out of position, especially if you're countered, meaning that they're gonna have a man left over to run through and score. So it's very important to play with a back four with those defensive on those fullbacks of yours, just as sure they adding that extra layer of protection, making sure they're not getting caught upfield on the counter. Now, sometimes against a 4-3-3 or a 4-4-2, I'll mark one of their lone or both center forwards with one or two of my deepest midfielders. So obviously if it's a 4-3-3, they've got one center forward, therefore one of my defensive midfielders will be set to do man mark their striker. What this does is it prevents quick counter and long ball tactics. They rely on getting the ball forward, however, in this match, it was actually a bit of a mistake. And I'm gonna sort of touch on that and why, and this, and you're gonna see me make some changes later on in this game. But I wanna first highlight uh, what I'm looking at as I'm playing. Okay, so we get things kicked off and I start progressing the ball forward, but easily intercepted by Skulls, pass it to Foden, and he goes backwards. Now, this is something I should have picked up on a little bit sooner, that he was being a little bit more slower pace build up than I expected. This was a straight pass. I don't know what happened there, to be honest. I was pretty pretty annoyed about that. It should be a simple pass, but out here, I was expecting the ball forward. And if we look here, we can see my the man marking is doing a good job. He's intercepting the, that sort of pass into Rude Van Asteroy, so that's what I wanted to stop. And we're seeing here, and I'm gonna point it out, is Paul Scholes picks up the ball. And look how slow he is at sort of progressing the ball forward. He's passing it backwards. He's working it really nicely, better than most players that I would sort of normally see. And here, what we're going to see is just look at the distance between these two players and my midfield. And this is something I start to pick up on a little bit later in the game when I start when I start having shots, which we're going to see. But that's something I should have perhaps noticed sooner. But I didn't expect his build-up to be quite so slow. And he eventually gets it wide, pulls it back. Again, very, very patient in his build-up. And here, look at the gap with these two midfielders. Sitting off my sort of defensive line, he gets a shot. I'm no, I was nowhere near that, like closing that shot down. And that's obviously a real risk, especially with someone like Paul Scholes, who's got excellent shooting ability from long range. You know, I haven't got the best goalkeeper, and it was a, it was a real threat. I came down the side, have a header across the goal, unlucky to score, not to score there. I thought it was sort of a half chance, but he did really well on that header to get it anywhere near the target. And you can see here he is playing a defensive style as well, or defensive strategy. And that's going to help his two midfielders drop off that little bit more. And that's why they're picking up the ball. Picking up the ball in space, plays it to Skulls. He is a little bit surrounded there. So I'm pretty happy with that, that element of the game. I'm getting good attacks. Again, I'm being patient myself. Playing the ball around, looking for little one-twos. Didn't quite pull off the sort of through ball there to my striker. But again, pull Skulls, dropping deep. And that's what was happening. That's what that's what I should have picked up on sooner. Again, skulls picking up the ball, laying it off. So those two, right there, are dictating the play. Again, skulls to Foden, and it's it becomes very very apparent of just those two controlling the game from his point of view. How's that not a free kick? And that's that's basically what I'm going to address. But you can sort of see it. Now I watch it back and I'm like, cool, I should have noticed this sooner. But that's what I said, when you play eFootball, you've got to notice things sooner. And what I would say is, if, like I was a bit unlucky here. What I was going to say is, if you, are, if you are playing this game, you've got to notice what's going on, right? If you haven't had a shot and goal in the first 20 game minutes of a game, Something is clearly not working because you should have had at least one shot on target. If your opponent's having more shots than you, you have to change it. 
you've got to change it, either the way you're playing. First off, I would tend to start with the attack and defense strategy. I tend to change that first and just to see if attacking works better or defensive works better. You know, those you can test pretty quickly. If it's still not working and you're still finding it difficult to either create chances or your opponent's creating too many chances, too many clear cut chances, sort of identify where those problems are coming from. You need to look and say, okay, the fact that I'm getting outflanked or outnumbered in defense is because my fullbacks are too high up the pitch. Put them on defensive. Things like this. you gotta, you got to take this into account. If you notice here, I brought my midfielders out wide to try and double up in those fullback positions. But still, he's able to get the ball forward. But like I said, there he's not able to overload me because I've got players back there. But again, Skulls having another shot from range. And I, at that point, I was like, hmm, this is a this is a problem. Like, he is controlling the game completely with those two players. Again, Skulls, loads of, loads of space, plays the ball forward. Again, causing me a hell of a lot of problems. Another shot from range. So he's keeping having pots, pot shots from range. And eventually, it, one of those could go in. And then it's going to cause me problems. Because that will change his, perhaps his style. He may go more defensive. He could go... You know, more looking for more counter-attacking options as I try and push forward. You know, I'm now playing an attacking strategy because I'm not happy with the way the thing game's going. And one of the things I noticed was that Skulls and the player next to him was dictating the play. So I'm thinking if I put an attacking strategy on, maybe my players will get a little bit closer. But we'll see that that doesn't really happen. And that's when I'm like, okay, something needs to change. Again, look at just look at Skulls' position. There, he was free. He could have played him in. And he's just being a real pain in the butt for me. Or against me, should I say. <laughs> Not for me. But again, like I'm having I'm having decent opportunities, but I need to be in full control. I do not need my opponent having chances themselves. I need to be like dictating every aspect of the game, defensively and offensively. If there's a way I can make it more effective going forward and defensively, where they're getting no chances and I'm having a few chances here and there, I'd much rather that than they get the odd chance here and there because there's always that, you're always opening yourself for that chance for them to score. And this is where I address it. So half time, I, I look at the system, I look at this, what's going on and I go, okay, what's happening here? is those two players are dictating the play. I'm like, get rid of man marking on Van Nistelrooy and then apply man marking on Paul Scholes with Camavinga and Valverde with Simmons. And those are my two advanced midfielders. And why do I do this? Because I still want protection from Tonali and Kamara to protect those through balls to Van Nistelrooy and Mbappe. Okay, so the second half kicks off and what I'm looking for now is just to see how well we're going to be able to deal with Valverde and Skulls. And I think instantaneously we're, you can see sort of Camavinga and Simmons press high up. And I'm just going to freeze it just sort of in a second just to sort of give you an idea. So Paul Skulls has got the ball here. Look at Camavinga's position. Look at Simmons on Valverde right on top of them. And it sort of forces a mistake. He tries to get the ball forward. And that's what I wanted. I want my defensive midfielders to then be able to mop up Tonali and Kamara. And that's exactly what they're doing. Kamavinga drives forward here. It's a pretty weak pass. Skulls picks up the ball. But he's already under pressure. So he's constantly under pressure at pretty much every stage of the field now. Wherever he passes the ball, that player is going to be able to pick up the... You know, apply a good, good amount of press to that player. If there's a big gap then there's something seriously wrong. So every player now is sort of, I mean, it's not ideal, but that's the fact that he's playing a meta formation. We're getting a lot tighter to him. We're stopping him from playing. Look, Skulls almost has that pass intercepted. He does get the ball forward, but my defensive fullbacks are right there, able to sort of pro provide some protection. And then it's a quick counter-attack now. Look at this. Look at this for a ball. Look at that for a ball. Wonderful ball through the ball. But I don't know what my striker was playing out here. He sort of... I don't know what he was doing to be honest. He scored, but I was pretty annoyed that he was doing this weird action where he sort of lets the ball or runs ahead of the ball at one point. Look at this. Look, he runs ahead of the ball and then puts it in the back of that. I don't know what he was doing, but I'll take it anyway. Got a little bit fortunate, I guess. And away we go for the, you know, after the first goal. So he's a goal down now and he's changed his tactics. He's now gone from defensive to neutral. So now we're going to see how this plays out. 
There's just a lot of weird stuff. Going I'm on. still with the attacking strategy, mind you. So here he does get a shot off. So again, he's starting to find space with Mbappe dropping off the front. It's a four, three, two, one. And that's why I do like those defensive mid midfielders, man marking strikers. Just you know, just give them a little bit of pressure if they do drop off. But in this game, obviously, I couldn't have it because I needed to control those uh, well, Paul Scholes and Valverde. And there we go. Look at that, nicking the ball and play the ball wide here. It's, if that's not a poor touch, I'm able to square that and score a goal. But it's no need either because Simmons here pressing on Valverde, exactly what I wanted. Paul Scholes is covered as well. And there we are. We play the ball forward. And it's that bit of tactical change that gets that goal. And it's and it's pretty much the instigator for all of the good play that night that I'm now doing. And that's why I say tactics in this game is huge. Getting it right is absolutely massive. And that's precisely what I did in the sort of second half. But like I said, you have to identify the issues first. Otherwise, you know, you're just making changes for the sake of it. So you've got to see the, the entire picture of what actually is going on. He's coming forward here. Intercepted by my defensive fullback. And then we're able to break forward once again. Ball over the top to Simmons. Shot. And comfortably saved, but you can start to see the pressure really get into him from those midfielders that are man marking and just the general formation as well. It's very narrow. The only out ball he's got is wide, but I've got my sort of fullbacks back there as well. He gives the ball cheaply up because he's got nowhere to pass to. He's, he's got no outlet here. He's got no outlet. Skulls and Valverde are being dealt with. He's He can't go wide because my defensive fullbacks are there. And again, like through the middle, he's got no option whatsoever. He's, com he's being completely and utterly shut down. He is a very good player, no doubt. He's got a lot of good players in his in his side. He's got an incredible team. But it's just the fact that if you get it tactically right, you can shut down the best of players. And that's precisely what we did here. So I went to make some substitutions, but he quit out handing me the win. He could probably feel those changes that I made stifling his game. And he was no doubt a good player. The way he passed the ball around and controlled much of that first half. This really shows the importance of getting the tactics right in eFootball 2023. So just a quick recap on things you need to do. First, analyze your gameplay. Are there any weak points? Is your opponent controlling the game? Have you had a shot on target in the first 20 minutes? If not, then first change the attack defense strategy. Usually set it to attacking first is what I do. If that doesn't change things, try defensive for the attack defense strategy. Maybe even try a sub tactic if you have one. If at half time you're not happy and things are still not working, change formation, change the individual instructions, but it helps if you notice the problem like I did in this match. Like if you find big gaps between your players, then you need to make some changes to prevent this. In the next episode, ladies and gents, I'm going to share with you a possession-based formation that breaks the meta formations such as 424 and 4213 with ease. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care. Bye bye. Oh, he's done it. Oh, done him. Another scoop chip.